What's up guys? I'm Paul. This is Pauline Theology. And today we're going to continue our study on the attributes of God. And today's attribute that we're going to be talking about is actually two attributes. We're going to be talking about his knowledge and his wisdom. And I thought those were good to put together because it's not that he just knows everything, but he knows how to use this knowledge that he possesses. And so we call knowledge omniscience, meaning all-knowing. God knows everything, and he knows everything in two ways. First, he knows himself intimately, perfectly, and completely. See, God says the only one that knows the Father is Jesus. And then Jesus says, the Father knows me. It says in Scripture as well that uh, who can know the mind of God except the Spirit of God? So God knows himself. The triune God knows himself completely and intimately. Now think about that for a second. I don't know myself completely. And we as humans often say as a, a way of talking to each other is that you never know until you're in that situation how you're going to act. My wife asked me what I want to eat for lunch or dinner, and sometimes I don't even know that. But see, God is not like this. God knows in any given situation how he's going to respond. He knows how he's going to act and how he's going to do things because he knows himself intimately and completely. Now, another way that God knows is that he knows everything externally to them. That means he knows how many hairs we got on our head. Scripture says that. He knows the future, the past. But I know the end from the beginning, from ancient of times, what will pass or what will come. You see, God knows every instance of everything that's going to happen. And he knows this, it's because he knows himself and all that he has created, all that he does, which is creation, he knows exactly how it's going to be, what's going to happen, and how it's going to happen. And one thing that is difficult about this, and a new sect of theology has come about because of this, is understanding how God can know everything, and people still have free will. Well, I don't really have a great explanation of how, but I do have an explanation from scripture that proves it is true. You see, take, for instance, 1 Samuel chapter 10. We see that uh, Samuel talks to Saul in order to become king. He anoints him, and he says a couple of things are going to happen in order for him to realize that he's a man of God. First off, he's going to find a couple of people that are going to have some donkeys or some colts, I think, that's holding them up. And then he's going to run into three people who are worshiping God, and then they're going to prophesy, and then he'll prophesy with them. And it says in Scripture that all of these things come to pass. God, speaking through Samuel, said these things, and they came to pass. However, all the things that Samuel had said to Saul about this, the people that did these things had their own wills and their own minds to carry it out. So I do know that God knows the future, and he knows what men Think, act, and do with the will that they have. So I know it's difficult to think about it, but Scripture clearly states it as being a truth. And we got to remember that God, He is, is a, a simple being, means that, that He is not composed of, of parts. And so whenever you ask Him in something like, How many hairs do I have on my head? Because Scripture says He knows all those things. He knows every star in the sky and knows them by name. It's not that he has to recall those things or even has to count to see. It's because he knows these things from eternity to past, just like he says, from ancient times. In scripture, ancient times means eternity. He knows these things from eternity. And the next thing I want to talk about is his wisdom because it's not that God just has this knowledge, but he uses this knowledge wisely. Wisdom, in a sense, means not just having the knowledge, but knowing the best way to use knowledge. It's using that knowledge that he has to have the greatest ends using the greatest means. It means that he knows the greatest purpose, which is for his glory, but also how to get there in the best way. Scripture says that 
that he is the only wise God. Meaning that, that he is infinitely and awesomely wise. Also, scripture says that in whom all of the wisdom is hidden. That means all wisdom is hidden in God. When, when you go to scripture and, and uh, you look and see how we get wisdom, it always comes from God because he's the possessor of wisdom. It is who he is. He is wise. He is wise. Now, what this means for us is not only can we trust God because he knows everything that's going to happen. You see, when we feel sad or broken or hurt, I man, we can know that God knows how we feel, man. That just brings like uh, just a sense of calmness to me. You know, a lot of times we get angry and frustrated because we don't think that anybody knows how we feel. But God does. Because he's infinite in his knowledge. God knows how we feel. But what's even greater is that God doesn't just know how we feel, but he knows the best way in order for us to grow from this. To grow more of a likeness and an image of who he is. He can take all those, those pains, those hurts, those struggles, and he can mold them and turn them into our good. Because he knows the best way to do those things. You see, his ultimate goal, his ultimate purpose is for his glory. But not only for his glory, but for the good of his people. That's what scripture talks about in Romans chapter 8. And because he is looking for the good of his people, that means that that knowledge he has of our pains, our struggles, our hurts, our sufferings, he's going to use those pains, those hurts, those struggles, those uh, uh, difficult seasons in order for us to be more like him. Man, that's why I'm so glad that we can talk about the infinite knowledge of God because he knows how we feel. He knows everything that's going to take place. But not only that, he knows how those things can take place in order for us to be the best person that we can be. Now, if you check out another one of my videos, I speak about his omnipotence. And I'm going to talk about it just shortly here because it helps us to realize that not only does God know, and not only does God understand the best way to use this knowledge but with the power that he has he carries it out and so i hope if you're listening to this or watching this video today that this reminds you of the all-knowing god that he knows what his plan is for us in the future he knows the struggles and the things that we've done in the past and yet and yet ooh, he loves us still he cares for us still he sent his son to die for us and redeem us still because he knows that through these struggles, these pains, the death of his son, that we can come to a knowledge of him and we can be loved and cherished in his family and his name can be glorified and honored forever. I appreciate you guys for watching and I hope you're enjoying this series and keep on keeping on in the struggle today and may God bless you guys. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.